All right, on this episode of the Garlic Marketing Show, part of our book marketing series, I'm here with Alinka from Leaders Press. Alinka, thanks for being on the show. Thank you for having me, Ian. And we're gonna to talk today about how to become a bestseller on USA Today, what the value it is, how to determine the cost for outsourcing books, the, be the way to determine what book is perfect for you, as well as how to get your book into yours and become the authority and get found. All this on the Garlic Marketing Show book series. But before we get started, of course, it's brought to you by VideoCaseStory.com. One of the best ways to improve your books is through customer stories. And we can get you videos of your customer stories, collected, crafted, and delivered, both in your book and throughout your entire marketing. Just go to VideoCaseStory.com to learn more. Awesome. Let's get started. Getting on USA Today, you've been doing book publishing for a while and getting in USA and getting in bookstore shelves. Before we get into how you do it, I mean, what's the value of being a bestseller on USA Today? Mm. Well, it opens a lot of doors. Several of our authors who are speakers have been able to double their speaking fees and continue booking the same numbers of gigs. So, you know, introducing somebody as an expert in something and introducing them as a USA Today bestselling author and expert in their subject matter. Um, you know, it has a different ring to it. So hosts really enjoy bringing in speakers or keynote speakers that have that accolade. And we have authors who have been able to get investors on board because they were able to um, share with them books that have become bestsellers. So that's also really interesting you know um, investors want to get to know the person they invest in or the business they invest in their founder really really well and a book really allows you to sort of get into the author's or the founder's mind and understand them on a deeper level and that is also the you know for whoever is uh sells any services like coaching cons consulting and if you do sales calls, then if you ask your prospect to read your best-selling book before they come to the call, that's a completely different conversation. So rather than uh, getting questions like, so what do you do? They already know what you do, how you do it. You're an authority in their eyes. You have all the credibility. And uh, the conversation is really just about how their specific situation can be handled so that they can get the results they want because they already uh, know that you can do that for them. They, they, they've read a couple hundred pages of your book, so they feel like they know you even intimately uh, because they read your bestseller. So a lot, a lot of reasons to do that. And Yeah, I mean, it, it seems pretty obvious. I just want to ask, you know, if there were some other ones, and I, I mean, doubling your speaking fees or even becoming a speaker, obviously being a bestseller book is really a big deal. And also, if you all are trying to figure out like what book to do, how to do your book, you all help publish books, help write books, et cetera, too. You have some resources on that, correct? Mm-hmm. Um, so leaderspress.com slash discover. Tell me a little bit about what's there. When you go to leaderspress.com slash discover, you'll be able to go through a one minute quiz that will tell you what type of book you should write because there are different types. There's the legacy piece. Um, there's the lead generation book. There's a chapter in an anthology and they all serve a purpose. So we can go into that, uh, but that quiz only takes one minute and it, you know, the AI <laughs> figures out what your goals are and uh, what you should be looking at. And also, as a bonus, you get an audiobook of Outsource Your Book. That's my guide for getting your book done. The 17 steps to getting your book out. Originally, that was published in Entrepreneur Magazine, and then I expanded it into a book. So each chapter shows you how you can um, get that specific step done or outsourced. And at the end, we explain, you know, you can outsource every step, become the project manager of your book project, or you could work with professionals like us and we can take care of everything for you. So it really gives you very specific information, including what the cost is um, to get each step outsourced. So uh, pretty, a pretty thorough and straight to the point guide for anybody wanting to get their book done. Awesome, awesome. And, and so 
you you all help publish people's books. You help get them at USA Today. Another thing we talked about is getting into bookstores. Why is it? I mean, everyone's buying everything off Amazon, right? Why is it important to get into bookstores? Well, people still go to bookstores. Otherwise, they wouldn't be profitable. They wouldn't exist. So you have an extra market uh, segment that you can reach. Um, and, you know, you just need to do the calculation, do the math. How many people will you be able to reach through a bookstore that you would not be able to reach online? So online is for sure very powerful. Amazon and other retailers are search engines. And uh, when your book is optimized for online searches, then they get to get their questions answered through your book. So that's super powerful. But there's still the uh, brick and mortar store that people go into, people who you know, like to look at the books, uh, touch them, smell them, maybe even lick them. So you appeal to those people and they will buy there. And there's also the, you know, you're at the train station or at the airport and you have a half an hour to kill and you like books, you will most probably get in and something might <laughs> catch your attention. And if, you know, it, it's really interesting. I'll tell you a story. We, uh, so we have a really strong lead generation machine going on where we're able to, to reach out to a lot of um, high level entrepreneurs that we can, that we would like to do books with, but there are some that are unreachable because they have so many gatekeepers around them because they don't uh, read their own email. They will have an assistant that will, you know, sort of screen and anything that is, you know, even mildly uh, uh, resembles a pitch, you know, they will never see it. So when you have a book, that person is able to find it. And one of the people that found our book, this was online, but the same story will apply to a bookstore. One of the people that found our book was the co-founder of DHL International and reached out to me saying, hey, uh, I might need your help. <laughs> and so, you know, based on that initial conversation, we did a book for DHL's 50th anniversary called Design to Win. So it's the sort of, you know, it's expanding your reach. Wherever your book is, even one copy in some, you know, weird bookstore in Alaska might, you know, attract a high level entrepreneur or a high level client on vacation uh, who will reach out to you because you, know, you were, your book was in the right place at the right time. Oh, I, I agree completely. And there's a couple of things I want to unwrap there. If, number one, I discover so many books and, and, you know, so many business leaders are traveling all the time. And if you have a couple of minutes, you're looking, yeah, I'm walking through the bookstore and discovering books that I would never have looked at otherwise, right on Amazon, whatever. And I can't tell you how many books I've picked up there. And even just looking at them, I might, sorry, bookstores, but I might discover the book there and go, okay, let me go get it on Kindle. So it's, it is like advertising, uh, which is, and it's a lot cheaper, I'm sure, in the long run than running Facebook ads all the time to your book. But uh, you said something there, and I want to make sure I heard you right. You said people might lick the book. Do you have to make sure your book tastes good? Yeah. <laughs> it's better. <laughs> yes. Why you need a good tasting book with Alinka. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's a whole nother market. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I mean, that's not our genre. <laughs> <laughs> but I do. I mean, you like the feel. A lot of people like the feel. I mean, I still have books there. And, you know, we talk with Mark Stern about like making, you know, delivering them. And it's about the delivery and the feel of it and, and having something really connects you to that person. And I, and I think that's amazing on a, in a bookstore. And it's still, I think, there's a piece of authority just being in a bookstore, isn't there? It is, and you know, it's some author's dream. So they just, they wanna get in the bookstore, see their book there, take the selfies, have a book signing. Like you could have a book signing, invite, you know, people you know, then strangers will come as well. The line uh, starts forming, you sign your books, maybe you do a book reading. This is all doable. Uh, we've had this uh, done with a co-founder of DHL International in Hong Kong. Um, I have pictures of that and, you know, this was a really amazing event. You know, he's a big time uh, entrepreneur, so you would expect that. But, 
even you know for somebody who's maybe less recognizable than whose business is less recognizable than DHL, you can still have an event, uh, and you know it's a great way of celebrating such a huge accomplishment as getting a book done and getting it out. It is, it is for sure. So let's talk about how you do this. How do you get your book into a bookstore? Mm. Well, there are two main ways and one is something everybody can do and the other one, something some people can do. <laughs> so what everybody can do is uh, everybody with a book, whether it's self-published or not, can go out to independent bookstores and pitch their book. And you can, you know, that usually requires meeting the owner um, and going after places that are not, you know, the mainstream ones. So small stores, gift shops, you know, just, and it doesn't even have to be a bookstore or a place with books. So you could think out of the box and let's say you have, um, you know, I'm looking at my view. Let's say you have surfers, a book for surfers. You don't, you might want to have that book in a store where they rent uh, wetsuits or surfboards or whatever. And then that's one book among a lot of other items. The only book, so it's sort of a no brainer to get it. So that's one way, but it's pretty time consuming because you have to approach them individually. Or, you know, you basically get it done through one point of contact and that's a big publisher that has the distribution and we have a distribution partnership with Simon & Schuster so they're one of the largest um, distributors in the US one of the largest publishers in the US and for the books that we deem worthy uh, we're able to extend that traditional distribution and get the books into bookstores so that's that's really really exciting and that's one of the uh, main reasons I would recommend going with a traditional publisher because every author has a choice. Am I going to pitch agents so that they maybe accept me and start pitching me to traditional publishers and my book will come out in two and a half years? Am I going to self-publish it and I can you know just hit the publish button whenever I feel like I'm ready, however no distribution, or am I going to go hybrid so there's an upfront investment but you know, there are certain guarantees and marketing things going on and distribution as well. That's part of it. So I think it's pretty empowering for any author to have that choice right now. It is. And yeah, and, there, and there's so many options out there. And, and, you know, how would you determine help? How do you help someone determine what's the best publishing path for themselves? Well, you know, we work with entre entrepreneurial type. So the entrepreneur, entrepreneur is usually a now person, like very few want to wait two years or two and a half years to see their book out, to get an okay from a gatekeeper. You know, most of them created their businesses because they were not, you know, necessarily compliant with the norms, had problems with authority or, or gatekeepers. They just went out there and did their thing and became successful. So it's really, you know, tough for them to, to, to just passively, you know, wait or wait for somebody's okay. Um, so then self-publishing comes into play, but self-publishing requires a lot of knowledge <laughs> if you want to get the book done. And okay, well, you can get in and uh, start learning, but then if you're the entrepreneurial type, you're going to say, okay, well, you know what? I'd be better off <clears throat> or my time is worth more than learning all these things, doing it myself. I'd rather, you know, get a professional team to do it. So that's, that's where we sit. Um, you know, that, so the entrepreneurial type is the person that wants the speed, wants the service, basically wants the result and wants to invest in that result. Um, so that's why we work specifically with business people, but we extend that to, uh, you know, like-minded authors who, even if not entrepreneurial, entrepreneurs have the entrepreneurial mindset. Yes. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Because I agree with you, you know, it, it and also if you're an entrepreneur, you have a big idea, you want to get out there as fast as possible. You want it working for you as fast as possible, as easy as possible too. Um, and yeah, there's so many variables, right? With the publisher. So once we get it out there, we want it to be 
a USA Today bestseller. I mean, being a bestseller for most people, like you said, it's it's so valuable. It can mean so much. When do you start working on that, and how do you do that? How how far ahead are you working on becoming a USA Today bestseller? We used to require like almost six months of a notice before being able to put together a campaign like that. Uh, but now we're getting much and much faster. We have a lot of relationships in the publishing industry. So just to give you an idea, I, my first book came out in 2010. And then I did a bunch of books. My first USA Today bestseller came out in 2018. So, you know, it took me like eight, nine years, <laughs> almost a decade to, you know, achieve that dream. Uh, at, at first it was just this remote, you know, maybe I, maybe there's a way, I don't know. So it really takes a lot to, to get there. And then uh, after getting that done the first time, I was so exhausted and tired and sick of it that for three years I didn't touch any bestseller campaign. And then we came back in 2020, so 2020, 2021, 2022, like we just started putting everything together, getting all the connections we've had, everything we've learned about book marketing, you know, just putting the puzzles together. And we've since uh, managed to get 198 authors on the USA Today bestseller list. And so we created a process, but you know, that's what we do. And we're building on a decade of uh, experience and connections and learnings from all the books that we've done, all the authors that we've worked with. So it's, uh, you know, when that's your business, then you're able to orchestrate it. If, if you're just coming in, this is the first time you've heard, ah, actually you can have a campaign to get on the USA Today bestseller. There's just so much that goes into it and it will take over your life if you want to do it, but it's a choice. So you can decide to do it or, you know, you can work with somebody who, who knows how to do it. And what are the keys to developing that type of campaign? I mean, what goes into a USA Today bestseller campaign? So first it's important to understand what the requirements are to get on the list. And USA Today, the USA Today bestseller list uh, has 150 top selling books on it. And those are the top selling books last week. Uh, so every week, 150 top selling books in the U S. Okay. So if you're, you know, um, if you're a Canadian or from anywhere else outside of the U S you still need to focus on U S sales. If you want to be on the USA today list, your physical, um, location doesn't matter. Like you can be wherever, but you need to focus on U S sales. Um, it can be a solo book. So by one author, or it can be an anthology. It can be a box set, whatever. It can be a paperback. It can be an ebook and, um, it has to be, there has to be a price on it. So it can't be like a free download. You can't get on the list with that. And, uh, so those are, those are the requirements to get on that list, like on the tail at the, to get on the tail end. So like be 150. You probably need to look at about 5,000 sales in a week. If you have a pre-order, all the pre-orders will count towards that week. And uh, so let's say, okay, so 5,000 more or less. So let's aim at 6,000. That also depends on the week because there are weeks when publishers like to publish and, and run huge campaigns. If you run your campaign that week, obviously your chances are smaller. So you need to find a week that's easier. But, you know, that requires also some experience and, you know, understanding what the publishing seasons are and what the weeks are. But now you probably have an understanding of how many copies. Okay, so 6,000 copies sold. So now you need to see how you can achieve that. Do you have a mailing list that's big enough? And then you look at your open rates. Okay, so what's my open rate? What's my click-through rate? Um, what's my a Amazon conversion rate? So probably need like a half a million people on your list or so to get to those 6,000 sales. If you do the math, I wrote a Forbes article about that, where I pulled the numbers from like my software and use, use my calculator, but it's a pretty big numbers to get to those 6,000 sales. And you need to do it really fast unless it's a pre-order or are you going to work with partners who are going to mail for you and if they're going to mail for you, why? So what incentive are you? 
giving them? Are you going to run ads? If you're going to run ads, how much are they going to cost you? And are you able to maintain that ratio consistently throughout the whole launch period? So there's a bunch of ways you can do that. Uh, we, we do all of the above. Uh, and you know, it really is a matter of, of getting that ROI because, you know, you might be able to run ads, but it's just going to be so expensive. And you might still not be able to do it because you're not going to be able to spend all your budget because <laughs> there's also that like with some of the platforms, if you've uh, ever run ads. So there are various avenues, but they require precision and planning. Yes. I mean, it seems it seems a bit overwhelming and it makes sense if you really want to do it, unless you have lots and lots and lots of time, which I don't. It's good yeah, to, we all have <laughs> lots and lots of lots of time, right? <laughs> And patience. I have neither time nor patience, so <laughs> I'm not doing that. Uh, but you know, I guess you can if, if you know, or or take the shortcut and hire so hire an expert. Um, so speaking of hiring an expert, tell me, you know, a, a more about your services and you know how this all works. Because obviously, we can you can help decide the book. We can go to um, you know with that link that we have down below for Leaders Press. But how, what's it like to work with you? How long does it take? Tell me a little bit about that. What's it like to work with us? It's easy because you come in with a book idea. All you need is an idea and you leave with a bestseller. You know, if that's what you choose. So if you look at some of the testimonials we have at leaderspress.com, one of the recurring themes is easy or I almost didn't have to do anything. It was so easy. Like I almost didn't deserve it because, <laughs> you know, they didn't put all the sweat and pain that, you know, maybe for they had to, the authors had to for some other achievements in their life. But it's easy because, you know, we figured out how to do it. We put together the process, you know, it, it, it's a step by step uh, type of thing. And um, the, the true commitment is if you're going to come with an idea, because you can also come with a manuscript that we evaluate and if it works, we're, we'll publish it. But if you can come with an idea, and uh, I think the most valuable thing that we're able to do is to really position it on the market. So understand where it belongs on the bookshelf and how it's going to stand out among the other books on that bookshelf. So does the world need another book? Well, we're gonna find out <laughs> and by you know having a conversation. How, there has to be a unique selling proposition, right? Like with any business or with any product, there has to be a reason for it to exist. So we find that reason. And if we feel like it, like the, the unique selling proposition is not strong enough, then we will help develop it so that it, you know, it becomes uh, appealing. And after that, we do the outline and uh, which the author okays. And then we have a series of interviews. So it's like 15 interviews. Uh, where the interviewer pulls the wisdom out of the author's head. Then that all gets transcribed. All the publishing stuff is being done. So the editing, the formatting, the book cover, the book cover also, uh, you know, we're really good at doing those so that they're appealing and they uh, attract the right target audience. And what I mentioned before, optimizing the book for online sales, because, you know, Amazon or any other retailer is a search engine. So you want your book to come out, you know, like when somebody is looking for how to write a book, uh, my books come out <laughs> or how to market a book because they're, mm, they're positioned, you know, they're, they're optimized for that type of uh, result. And then we, uh, at the same time, we also orchestrate the launch. So depending on what your goals are, we'll do either an Amazon launch or a USA Today slash Wall Street Journal launch and you know depending on the goals we'll do a brick and mortar distribution or not because that's longer it's a longer process because it's part of the traditional publishing uh, world so it takes some time because it needs to get into the system the uh, sales reps need to start selling it to the retailers that all happens before the book is ever out so it's uh, a longer process but it can be accelerated oh. that's more or less how it works we do other things too that are faster, even easier than that. Um, but we have these, uh, let's say elegant packages where 
and you can really clearly understand what uh, what you need and, and and it works awesome awesome so we'll make sure I mean the, the best place we'll send people leaders press to that link and they can discover what type of book um, best place to follow you is LinkedIn as well yes all right so we'll put a link uh, link to your LinkedIn as well but Alinka, thank you so much for being on and sharing this insights on getting the top of USA Today, publishing a book and getting into bookstores. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me and asking all those great questions. <laughs> and thank you all for taking Alinka and I on our journey as part of this book marketing series. Uh, it's been Ian Garlic and the Garlic Marketing Show.